Hello everybody and welcome to the podcast, The Rasa Show. I'm the Rasa, of course, Rasa the Dancer. And for today's episode, I have amazing guests. I love them so much. We have Osbanis and Aneta. Now, they specialize in Cuban salsa, but they are so much more than that. And I like to call them like real teachers. <laughs> they oh. don't, it's true. They Thank don't just much. teach like little moves or something. They actually know about the history, about the musicality, about Cuban culture. There's so many different elements and they actually fantastic people. I know them personally. They're so lovely. And also they bring a lot of joy to people when they teach. Muchas so gracias. I love you guys. We love you too. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about Cuban salsa in a bit. But first, of course, I would like to know a little bit about both of you. When did you actually start dancing? Cuban salsa or is there any other background in dancing? Lady first. Lady first. Can and Anna? Time to <laughs> Let's keep it short and sweet. Can we? It's, yes. I don't know. Yes, it's been can. a long, long time for me dancing. So um, I started as a little girl. I was taking classes of ballet when I was about four or five years old. But apparently I was too energetic and my parents decided <laughs> they need to find the way and place that they can release my energy so i started different form of dancing like disco you know this wow. kind of back in poland when i was a child <laughs> and then i discovered ballroom um so i was doing the latin dances and the ballroom dances and i was competing so uh, from innocent sessions one twice a week i ended up rehearsing every day of a week from monday to friday and saturday and sunday competing all over the place wherever I could, wherever I could travel and, and perform and, and take part in competitions nationally and internationally. And that became my passion ever since. And from there, you know, ballroom, it's, you've got a background, right? Yes, I So do. you know exactly what, I, what I'm talking about. It's quite stressful, it's quite competitive. You don't dance necessarily only for fun. It no. is about perfection. It's Absolutely. about um, setting the goals and competing kind of more with yourself. Sure. It's you, mirrors, hours and hours of training, coaching, private sessions. So it's like a never ending journey. Absolutely. And so when I discovered salsa, I was like, wow, this is so nice. Like people are actually smiling naturally <laughs> because they want to. They're actually relaxed about it. Exactly. You dance with any partner because I don't know if many of you know, but in ballroom you actually have one dance partner and you dance with just that one dance partner and you work on the dance routines and choreographies and you practice the same routine and choreography day in, day out. Um, so salsa was so free for me. It was mm. like a freedom. You have so many different figures that you could actually just communicate. So finally I realized, you know, what I always loved about dance, about self-expression and communication and be able to talk and communicate with a partner without words doesn't matter where you're from, doesn't mm -hmm. matter your background, you meet on the dance floor and you can just enjoy it together. And so that what steal my heart. But I started the crossbody salsa. I was not starting right away with Cuban. Actually, I think my first performance was Rueda, funny enough. <laughs> uh, and that was back in Poland with a, like a performance team. Sure. Uh, but then I didn't have any background. So I didn't know anything about rumba, Afro-Cuban. Actually, I think nowadays it's more concept and consciousness about it. But when I started, it was 2005, that was still not so developed. Like people were dancing Ruela, they were dancing Cuban salsa without actually incorporating those, you know, such important roots of mm -hmm. salsa, any style. So rumba and Afro-Cuban was something completely, you know, like, strange to me I didn't know it and when I actually saw Cuban rumba for the first time I was like that's not rumba because I knew the ballroom rumba and I'm like that's not rumba what are they doing and they were like no that's actually the real one so yeah for the ballroom dancers rumba we dance in ballroom is actually dance to bolero music yeah it's completely and different. it has nothing to do with rumba and yeah and that's Afterwards, and then, I met this guy and he completely converted me to Cuban. So we don't goal. know whether it's actually the love for Cuban salsa or for this <laughs> Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot take her word for this, yes? She is biased. <laughs> now, what's your story? Ballroom as well, yeah? Uh, <laughs> no, ballet, ballet, ballet. Uh, ballet is not ballet, oh, okay. 
very imagine. unusual. No, I think your your dad would be in shock if you dance ballet, no? Eh, no, my background. Let's not go there. <laughs> Politics. Um, no, my my background original. Um, I was in the sports school. I was uh, when I was a child. I was in the sports school for baseball. Baseball. Uh, I was a baseball player. Okay. Uh, in Cuba from sporting. yeah from from ten when I was ten. Uh, from ten to sixteen. So after after that, uh, I went to music school because I moved to Havana because mm -hmm. I am from Grandma Manzanillo. So I am uh, in another uh, uh, oriental Santa part. Mm -hmm. After Santiago de Cuba, Guantanamo, yeah, wow. Grandma, yeah. So, Very proud to be yeah. <laughs> uh, and then after that, I start to study uh, music mm. uh, in the night for adult because um, normally you go to another school for a child, but I went to sports school, no music school. Many people they think I went to music school. I went to do me. I went to do music school in for adult. So right. I was studying the day in the, day, in the night, I was uh, doing this extra, right? Mm. So, and then after that was uh, something different for me because uh, I went to another uh, uh, war. Mm. No, 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 the sport war anymore. So uh, I went to the, the music war. So the music war was a dance war yes. at the same time. So I met dancers and musicians. So from there, uh, my life changed completely because it's different way. But in Cuba, we have a big mentality. I'm sorry if you're talking too much now, but no, it's no, important no, no, to know no. this how, is what how, we like to hear. how in Cuba we have this uh, love for, uh, I mean, the culture, music, sure. dance. Uh, many people, we have this in Cuba because we growing with this. We born with that. We even know we have this. But you know, it's our culture. We have it there. It's not like mm -hmm. here, like you practice every day to get better. Because we don't have it. You don't have culture. it. You need to have it. Like mm -hmm. uh, you, you learn some language, but you go to a your country, but you need to speak the to language. continue the language. Right. To you know what I mean? It's there. Right. But to short story. <laughs> so I come to England. Uh, I mean dancing because uh, I start dancing uh, rueda on the street with mm -hmm. my friends. So I was doing my music, but still, I was uh, dancing like for 15 years when the lady have a, when the girl come 15 years, we have a group, we make a parties for these ah, girls, right? Like sweet 16. We have a group. Wow. So in Cuba is the 15 year old. So all the girls that are 15, they dress like a princess, they take beautiful photos and there's like a big celebration because for them 15 is like when they become... A Quinceañera. We don't have that in Lithuania. Really you, <laughs> you 18, leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> you fly, baby. Like you fly. A bird. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this 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 in Cuba is very popular because um, I mean, from there I start to 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 dance more to to learn with my friends. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to school because the dance is from the street. It's sure. not, uh, at school, you learn more like a uh, contemporary uh, uh, like ballet uh, and all that. But you you have another schools too, like uh, to to learn folklore. Mm. For Cuba, you have the the art school. They have these too. So, but it's different. I mean, we have a different background. Everybody in Cuba. But here, when you come to England, I mean, Europe outside Cuba, it's a salsa war. Mm -hmm. It's more bigger. So when I came out uh, of Cuba, I see the salsa war is even really big, more bigger than Cuba, mm. because in Cuba is our culture. We have it there. Uh, in Cuba, even the people that go there, oh salsa, let's go and dance salsa. How they dance? And I was like, no, 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 don't dance like everybody dancing outside. Dance how you dance, mm -hmm. because they come here to learn the casino. How you dance the Cuban? Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, you know what I mean. I see yeah. this change. That the people was confusing because for for Cuba it's a business too. If you coming tourists to go to Cuba to of learn, course, course. but if you come here to learn the same thing you learn in Europe, it's different. Because this is we, this is what in Cuba we think you come here to learn this. Mm. They Commercial. don't they don't understand is the, now they understand. Now we have a lot of now festivals in Cuba salsa. I talking about 2002, 2003 when I was dancing. Now. 
Now the salsa world, mwah, Cuba music. Now everybody love Cuba music, crossbody, uh, no crossbody, everybody. Yeah. Because Cuba music have this essence because it's the roots. Yes. You feel there is like a short story, right? <laughs> <laughs> because they say to not talk too much because yeah, we I, went to. Before we filmed, I was like, just you know, keep it nice and brief. <laughs> No, but anyway, this is good. so this is good. we this start, is good. yeah, when we start to dance, you have to go uh, straight away there because we can be talking more. Um, when I start dancing, um, more was, was when I was here. I was dancing there, dancing hall, I was dancing, that's holidays, mm -hmm. then coming from England to Cuba, I was teaching them there. So when I get to England, I, I met them here too. So I have I already connection when I come here to, so we go to Bar Salsa. Mm. Where was the all this the cream of salseros? Yes, I remember we was meeting every night there. No Tuesday, Tuesday was sound. Was one Monday club called eight. sound? A sound used to be where the Eminem's word is now on uh, Leicester Square. Leicester Square. Yeah. Yes. That whole place downstairs that, that used to be sound. On and it Tuesday. was the most amazing Tuesday sound. That's in London, guys. So there was, I mean, in Barcelona I was when I met Aneta. Bailando. <laughs> that so. was actually the next question that I had because this is not for you guys, this is for me. I'm <laughs> curious. How did you meet? When did the love story begin? And uh, how did you what become does? dance partners? And then the loves of their lives. I love a love story. You want me again to talk? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll Let talk. me see if you remember. I remember very well. Um, we met in Barsasa, yeah, we didn't, still the temple didn't exist yet, so it was Barsasa Soho, and like Osvalis mentioned, we used to go out every night, like, we, there was a group of friends, and we would meet constantly, like, I came to London to study at university, that was the reason I came here, and I was working part-time, studying full-time, and then saying double full-time, wow. because every day of the week, I sometimes we ask, Ourself, how could we manage that? Like know, literally right? every day of the week, but in a way for me, I think you know, learning your like independent life, coming from another country, the dance community became my family. Mm. So we literally like we were going out every night, dancing, having fun, and enjoying each other's company. And yeah, I well, we were friends, and we first well, actually, funny enough, in the beginning we were hiding. So nobody knew that we were a couple and we were like... The uh, secret yeah. romance! We were like, no, and people were like, no, no, you two were like, what do you mean? We are best friends, you know, it's it's nothing. No, 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 you, you seem to be like very close. We're like, yeah, we are best friends, so we are close. And so people had their we say suspicions. We say we're friends. Yes, people had their suspicions, but we were like, no, we are just friends. And so we first... Uh, with boyfriend and girlfriend and then I was still dancing with my dance partner crossbody salsa and and then Osman is, was a solist and in the end he's like why don't we try and do something like why don't we dance because as probably he'll tell you now soon uh, he always liked the ballroom and Latin dancers and hip-hop dancers thinking that we are dancers that very easily adapt to different styles have very good memory choreo and you know routines and everything was ba, 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 sharp and clean so he was like just for fun let's do something in the garden in mm -hmm. uh, where we used to live and let's just you know make it show but just for fun and I'm like yeah sure why not and so we started like that to to create something together and I remember I was like wow it's so easy to work with you like you know it's so nice to <laughs> yes it is know. and uh, yeah like that we we started to create more things together and then started teaching together I actually remember I came home and obviously my dream was to be able to study at uni and dance only to drop my shopping assistant work, you know, in Oxford Street, which was like dreadful to get through <laughs> every day. And, and as Bunnies, I remember I came home after uni, after work, we were having dinner and he's like, let's do it. Let's try to work together. Um, because it was true, he was coming to his events, I was coming to my events. We would then not really see each other much because when the time was for teaching or weekends away for festivals and conferences, 
we would not see each other because I had a different dance partner and husband was a solist and we would miss each other around. And so we were like worried to put private and professional life together, but at the same time we thought we travel so much and if we're not going to do it together, then we're not going to see each other. So but that's that the thing, point. I think it's, uh, it's always scary to put the work, professional life and personal, but in our jobs, otherwise it's also unsustainable. Like, how do you maintain a relationship doing the work that we do? Like, being out on every weekend, practice and everything. It's, it's like, when do you see each other? Yeah. That's hey. a good call. Yeah. High five. Hey. Hey. <laughs> that was it's in 2007. Seven. Like, yeah. Seven. So now we can relax, yes? Now it's working out. It's been long yeah, time. Yeah, the thing is, <laughs> you know, um, was a... Uh, to... to I mean, let me see. Let me let me put in the right place. Okay, you know, um, we have a friends. I have a friends. Uh, at that time, uh, everybody commenting how you wanna do, how you how you want to work together, live together, work together, do this together. And then I didn't do that before, so I, like, I don't know. I never tried. I never did. No, but be careful because it this and that and this. Or like okay, but if he had, let me try because that's the only way we can be together. Mm. And you know when the relations start, you know you try to be the most closer possible because it, you want to know more this person. Of course. So I said okay, let's keep a try. You know it's gonna that's start nice. to work and this and that. Still some of the organizer because you know mm-hmm. salsa war and at that time. Because even when I go to, to, to dance, some of the guys they said to me, no, no, you don't need a woman. You just, just you, take any girl yeah, from, the, from class. the class. And then they said, like, no, uh-huh. I need a girl for telling the girl what to do. And, and then, also for the girl to be inspired. Because that's yeah. now these days, we hear girls say all the time in classes, I'm so glad that there's a professional woman in the class because what about my styling? It's what important. about my footwork? What about my mm-hmm. body movement? Because even if the guy, the male teacher can explain everything, he's not going to explain those details. And then the and girls a always... And different physique, isn't it? Absolutely. Like, they can, they can but yes. But it's not the same. But it's not the Do same. Do you see it same as well? with the with the women teaching men men's style absolutely because i think it works both ways yes um, yes of course we can and also the male teacher can teach female dancers etc but um it's what you say i think we have different physique we have different dynamics in our body we have different expression personality feelings needs genetics so yes. you know it's not the same and i think it's it's really great and also funny fact of it is there is more ladies dancing than men yes but back in the day which is still happening but not as often as before um it's still kind of a man's word yes so even though there is more ladies dancing uh, of course i understand on the concept and the idea that a male teacher will be the leader so that the followers the ladies can dance with the male sure. teachers which is probably one of the facts there. But even I must say, I think from a women perspective, there is not enough support within women for women. Mm. Because um, it, it's a very deep subject. So I think it might be too long for today. To Actually, I, this is a subject that uh, maybe I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to sit down, no offense, just with you. <laughs> no, but to talk about okay. actual you know, women role in the whole dancing community yeah. and stuff and, and the things that is a deep has subject. happened and changed you know, or not. I don't think anyone would maybe even believe or realize, but what Osbanis mentioned is true. They were asking him to come alone. And it was Osbanis that had to stand his ground and say, no, I'm coming when I'm like, oh, I'm not coming at all. Mm. Okay, no, then then thank you. So, okay, call me when you need us when together. Ready, yeah. Because to yes. form a partnership, at leader and a follower and men and ladies studying yeah. our concept is to do it together and so it, it did happen numerous times uh, I'm not, I don't want to give names but you know yeah. yeah sorry but respect for me respect for the community of dancers sure 
because it's not about the organizer. Because so many times the organizer think about him and not about the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or about it's like like it's like, like us. We are teachers. We don't we, we cannot give the people what they want or what we want. It's what they need. Yes. You yes. need to see what they need and then you need to work on that. I cannot yes. prepare something. You know what I mean? So what so many things happen at that time when we start to dance together? And then but I said, no, with Vanetta or then no, we don't there do there was, because I know that was on the list and that can lead to the next uh, yeah. question you had. Then was also the fact, which luckily I think changed over the years, that, oh, she's not Cuban. Mm. Why are you dancing with her? She's not Cuban. Um, why are you being an amazing artist that you are in Cuban scene as a Cuban dancer and a musician? Why are you going to dance with a Polish girl that is not Cuban, you know? So there were so many things coming together that I always that say, time. sometimes mm -hmm. we are our own worst enemies because we listen to those voices and instead of thinking about us, we're thinking what others say, what others think, and we hear that opinions and comments around us and that can sabotage your progress and your feelings and you know enjoying what you do um, and I must say I don't agree that you have to be Cuban to teach Cuban because for example based on my experience we had to translate the information the dance the movement into our body our language and for, for example, for Cubans, it's natural. They do it because they feel it and it's in their blood. And they don't have to be a professional dancer to have amazing body movement and body confidence because that's also two different things. Yes. You can have amazing body movement, but it's still not going to look authentic because you don't believe in yourself. Mm. And this is different layers to, to being a dancer, being a teacher, social dancer, performer, because you don't have to be amazing at all of these things. Someone can be an amazing teacher but not a great social dancer or can be an amazing performer but not such a great teacher. So, you know, it's, it's always nice to have um, a dedication and a vision for yourself. And I remember for me, in the beginning, it, it was this lack of belief that, okay, if people say that, it's probably not going to work. Because if everyone say, oh, she's not Cuban, she's not Cuban, she's not Cuban. And then I went to Cuba and I did personal mm. private training uh, with an amazing um, teacher. And she was like, what? Where did you come out from? Like, you know, you're not Cuban and you dance so much better than many of my dancers. And they invited me over to the rehearsals of a, of a team and everything. I want to show the world. I want to show everyone, you know, that you coming from a different culture can be so good at what we take for granted. Because that's something else that Osbanis mentioned numerous times. He actually appreciated his own culture more since he is out of Cuba. Because mm. he realized how much richness is there, how much information, how much inspiration. And like we say, when you have something, you take it for granted and you don't realize how special it might be. It happens still in Cuba with like reggaeton and salsa, etc. Mm -hmm. that it's actually thanks to the international salsa following. Because probably if it was for within Cuba, we would not have this amazing music coming every day, every week yeah. from Cuba. People are inspired to do more. Yeah. Because more people it's, see them. Exactly. So, you know, this stimulates the growth, stimulates the process and stimulates the development of that. Because within Cuba, reggaeton is like, was taking over for a long time. So, mm. sorry, a yeah. lot of things. Uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, to clarify the, this part when uh, the, the teacher in Cuba, uh, the madrina, mm. uh, was there. Reina uh, Lopez. Well, the amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, but n not only, not only her. Uh, it's not only about uh, because of Aneta. Even our students, even we we bring them to Muñequito Matanzas and all that. There was that. That's, they were like, what? They 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 are. Uh, when when they know this? When they know because we teach them here. Mm -hmm. And then to get it to because in Cuba they thinking you know is all the tourists that are coming around oh, I just just yes, want yes, to know yes. it's amazing dancers here when yes. they go there a lot of Cubans they will be impressed yeah because yeah, yeah. it's they do so many things here I mean in here more people 
dan salsa died in Cuba. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But be careful, in Cuba they know how to do their body. Yeah. My uh, friends, they don't know how to dance salsa very one, two, three, well, five, for example, seven. right? One, two, three, but they know how seven. to move their body. <laughs> Osbani said he learned to count outside of Cuba because in Cuba he didn't count. I didn't so, count because, because of... numbers are good to organize your movements, but not musical. Numbers mm-hmm. are just numbers, but to dance, you need to dance. With yeah, him. I took a private lesson with him and he was pum pum pa 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 pum 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 pa and I was like, oh, where's my numbers? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, that's magic. She looked yes, amazing. Yes, yes. She was doing beautiful. <laughs> so actually, what Osman is saying, we created back then when we started our collaboration the Dakokan school. Dakokan means from the heart. Mm-hmm. And so for us in dance and music, we believe everything we do has to flow from your heart because I always say it's not the same to dance by heart or to dance from the heart because mm. you can take it like robotic and dance by memory to execute movements but not to dance with your heart and express through your emotions because you need to dance with emotions to be authentic and to be real and to really enjoy to the fullest what you're doing while you're dancing so one of the things what Rosbein just mentioned was the Dakokan dream mm-hmm. uh, we were having a Christmas dinner with our students in London and they were like when are you going to take us to Cuba and we're like okay let's do it and we call the trip Dakokan Dream because, as Osbans was saying, our dream was to take them to Cuba and to make them realize it, how amazing they are and how great they are dancing. Because I think very often we doubt ourselves without actually knowing how amazing we are and how truly even better we can become if we open up and believe in ourselves. So that's why the trip was called Dakokan Dream. And very soon they realized the dream was was completed because the first That's night nice. we had the band pr- private concert they were playing for our students the pool. by the pool just for them and so they came from the airport they were having a meal and they were all eating the band was getting ready and the members of the band were like oh, let's show the tourists how we dance it so they start dancing and stuff and the People were like, yeah, hey, you know, our, we call them the Akukan family. <laughs> they, they were, of course, very welcoming and, you know, like, appreciated. So they were like, yeah, wow, you know, so great. And as I said, you finish, you eat it, you're happy, let's dance. And they came straight from the airport, straight after oh hours of God. flying. And then they started dancing and the band was like this. <laughs> And, and they said to us, where did you get these people from? Like, where they come from? So they England. Come from all, they come from all over, but they live in London. Oh my God, they're amazing. And we were dancing in front of them. Like, you know, they know so much more. And they're so wonderful. So that was the Dakokan dream. And the dream came true. Do you still do the trips to Cuba? Yes. yes. Obviously, COVID spoiled our plans a bit. So we've got a waiting list for the uh, new trip, which is hopefully coming next year, beginning of next year. We're just working out the final details because it's really kind of reinventing the wheel mm-hmm. after COVID. Because there are so yes. many changes um, that happen in Cuba over time, together with the currencies, all the locations we used to have worked out that was working perfectly. So. We so what I'm gonna do, I'm uh, gonna tag. You gotta come with us. Well, well, hopefully I'm gonna come <laughs> as well. But I'm also gonna tag the social media details so you can guys actually follow them. So when the trip comes up, you can also have a look. So we talked about a lot of beautiful things, and what I think is important for people to know, if they're thinking of starting Cuban salsa classes, what's the best way to choose a good place to go and a good teacher to actually learn salsa? You think it's very good looking? It's good looking, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's important to know what you want to achieve because we're all dancing for different re- reasons. So it depends if you want to develop further your body movement, body awareness, if you want to learn uh, more steps or figures. You need to know what's your focal point and what is your goal to achieve. And based on that, you can make your decision who would be the best teacher for you. We always open for you to write to us, to ask questions, to ask for advice. You know, it's great to be able to help you grow. Mm -hmm. So if you're not sure, always ask questions. Find, um, you know, like different information available on the internet. Ask your local teachers and then uh, based on that, you can make your decisions. You can contact us 
direct. So we are here to help, you know, we want to, the community to build proper, the proper one. And more here, I mean, around the world, but we made more in UK because we want how is around the world and we want to be in the UK. Definitely one tip that would come to my mind is focus on quality, not quantity, because dancing faster doesn't mean you're a better dancer. And also doing complicated things on the dance floor doesn't necessarily mean that you are an advanced dancer because you might be doing them wrong. So it's more important for you to focus on the quality of movement and what you do and quality of body movement coordination than just thinking of step, 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 step. Because that is just um, a memory. Yeah, so it's, I love that. it's about muscle memory and body memory, not only your brain. And that's what comes Quality, to... Quality, not quantity. I will tattoo this on my forehead. <laughs> and less is more. more. Okay, I will tattoo this on my chest. <laughs> what else? How are we going to look no, Okay, this enough face? is it up. Hey. Now, guys, he said it. He wants you to, uh, to write him. So, I will put all of the social media um, that they have, of course, in the description box. And they have loads of events coming up, like Cuba Ma Ma Cubanama. 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 <laughs> nice. Cubanama. <laughs> So they have events coming up. They have also the trips to Cuba that they're gonna start organizing again. So just if you follow them, you will get some updates and maybe you can join them too. But now, for those who are watching actually on YouTube, you're gonna get a special, special thing. Every time we're finishing a podcast, we always ask our guests to give something for the people that they could take away, like a tip, a move, uh, an advice and in this particular case what they're gonna going show to some sort of some sort of thing that you can actually learn so I'm excited because I have no idea what it is but now the little bonus is coming your way but guys thank you so much you thank all you thank you so, much. so thank much information you. and if you come back I would love to have you back because clearly we can talk for hours right yes. thank and you guys so much thank you Mwah. have a great day Recuerda, remember this Uno, dos, tres. Uno, Uno don't dos, stress. Tres. Oh, Come on. I, I, I can do this on my butt. <laughs> okay, Familia, here is your exercises. I'm so, gonna... the surprise we mentioned, we're going to give you. We want to give you one of our best and favorite exercises for body movement and body coordination that we advise you to use every day because it's about muscle memory. So the more you do it, the better you become and it, it works before you think, okay? First thing is gonna be always your knees. So you need to create the flow throughout your body movement. Remember the body to not be here? Yeah. Not to be bouncing. Ah, it's there. just thinking In. more down than up, okay? If you think of your action of the body going down, always it's going to come up. But if I'm thinking In, equally oil. up and down, it's becoming too robotic, okay? Like oil. It, like, and you spring oil. Oily no, e -o, e -o. no, e on, e on. No, e on, e on. Okay? Cool. Nice. Now, the next thing super important is to be proportional, okay? You cannot be very tall and do like tiktoks because your body it need to be grounded so for you to be proportional you need to think of a reference to your own shoulder width depending on how wide is my shoulders this is more or less how big is going to be my step if my step is tiny and i try to move my agua. body have no that's not agua that's coca cola yeah okay. so, so i need that. to open my my step at least my shoulder width apart okay it cannot be smaller because then I don't have enough ground. Bounce. From here, I'm thinking once again of the breathing on top of my knees. Okay. Now, one thing very important. Sometimes you want to imitate something because it seems to you like it's rolling your shoulders, but it's not. Your body can create illusion of rolling the shoulders, but it's just actually my body staying on top of my knees and bringing the flow all the way up to my torso already create that motion. But I'm not thinking of my shoulders. My shoulders just react 
oh. with attention to my torso. If my feet Not is light. together, or if my feet is apart, no. right? Yeah. Now, this is also super important for Afro-Cuban. This is super important for the rumba, rumba because, because we need to add off the already. knees, okay? If I'm on straight legs, I'm putting too much tension in my body and it's not gonna happen. It's not your fault, it's anatomy of our body. Our. So, be proportional, open up your step. Now, the next thing from here is moving freely side One. to side on top of your Chupata leg. Cotton, okay? One. E tu, e chupata cotton, and a one. E tu, e chupata, and one, e tu, and a five, six, four, and a five. 